Hello YouTube! Welcome back to the TriCraft server. This is Kankadia. We are playing DNS Tech Pack and it is early in the morning. If you couldn't tell, so my voice is a little bit weak. But I woke up bright and early because I uh, have a plan today. Today is actually Eddie Magpie's birthday. And I've had an idea for a little while for, for something I wanted to get him for, um, well, specific reason. But today's as good day as any. So I'm going to go and get him a present. And I just want what, what, what I think he wants. So I have to go out and get a couple of materials. So let's try and do that now, shall we? I've got, oh, before I do that, I want to show you, I've made a couple of improvements to my base, still a work in progress right at the moment. I, I want to switch out all my torches for glowstone stalagmite lighting. So I've got quite a, quite a bit of these off camera in the, in the nether. Not, not, not too bad of a haul. Uh, I, I, I've been using, utilizing my uh, ore processing here because I was finally able to get the uh, the wind turbines working to a certain extent. The, the, the downside is, uh, however, you can here, check check out this design. It's a little hard to see in the clouds. I had to get I had to get them just this. the spacing between them just right, because otherwise they won't function. And if you notice, the Y level right now is pretty high. So this is actually at cloud level. So this is very ouch, ideal. Ouch, for a uh, wind turbine. So how do you do a, a wind generator in IC2E? First, you get the kinetic wind generator here, and you attach that to a kinetic generator. This is sort of a, a general a generator, a gen gen, gen squared, if you will. And this one has to connect into it. This one, the kinetic generator also connects to uh, the water generator or any other kind of mechanical power translation, translation device. One downside I'm discovering, though, is this thing is actually producing more power than I thought it was going to. Uh, at peak, this thing produces um, that, that is uh, during a thunderstorm produces around 70 RF, uh, 70 EU per tick. This insulated copper cable can only take about 128 EU per tick. So I've only had this one generator functioning, and it's been more than enough to power my, my, my ore processing downstairs. And any more, and I would just be wasting power because this thing will still use up durability even if you don't utilize it for something. So I got to figure out some like, because because of bigger batteries or. Something like that. One thing, other thing I'm working on, not quite finished yet, is this, my greenhouse. So what I've done so far is I took a, some of my spare mossy cobble. Ah, this is exactly what I'm working on. This right here is what I wanted to avoid. Okay, see this here, all the snow? I took mossy cobble, I put some dirt in the middle, if you can see it that here, and I made some green glass because I've been, I've been growing cactus for a while. And I've made a whole bunch of these drawbridges from Tinker's Construct. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Okay, so it looks like snow is going to grow on go on top of those. Well, let's see what happens if it camouflages it. it. Might, might still, might not function the same way. So my my my, my idea is to run uh, some redstone ca uh, redstone uh, cable behind this, and have at least activate. This way, this, this thing will seal off when when not in use. In general, I'm actually not, I'm actually going to want to keep it sealed. The reason I want to have a retractable roof for my greenhouse is because I want to be I want to be able to produce some trees and some of them like like a like a great wood if I need that or even just you know maybe jungle wood anything that's larger than than, than this thing will need a clear sky. However, I am in a taiga biome, so I have to make a combination for the fact that if I don't seal the roof, I'm going to have to clean up snow all the time. That's a pain. But still a work in progress. And uh, over here, if I can show you, I have I, I've, I finally replaced my, my um, ladders with some elevator blocks. Oh, pro tip. I didn't know this before, but apparently there's actually a maximum range, a vertical range for these elevators, and that is uh, 20 blocks high. I, I, had, I had this thing working for a while, and I was like, what the heck's wrong? Is it obstructed? Is, is there a, did I make it off by one? But no. I see, uh, watch the Y level. 120, 100, 80. 60, 40, 20, notice this is a false level, and 12. So I actually had to make a false level here in order for the, the elevator system to, to work properly. Fortunately for me, I, I, I had the you know luck to make to you know make these all at, at, at 20 Y level increments of each other. I actually had to shave off the, at the top of the mountain by like three levels in order to get that top to work, but that, that's still in pretty good shape. So yeah, I, I done, I'm doing that, uh, doing this here. I still have not figured out exactly how to get this uh, IC2E system uh, ship shape. I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong exactly, but I have to figure out some of the, some of the logistics method because it, it, it's working. However, the problem is that right now I have I still have to. There's no there's no uh, automatic movement of uh, items from one thing to another. 
there's there's this thing which has auto eject unfortunately it's still auto ejecting to the first available inventory which is this hopper which is useless because now it's it's full of stuff that I can't I can't go through crushed and purified stuff and I'm just using this as storage for the moment so I'll figure a way around that Another thing I've done is uh, off camera, I was able to finally get a full set of IE2 plates. So I have just begun a little bit of Applied Energistics 2. I've got, oh, Eddie, thank you. Thank you so much for blowing my mind when I was doing Sky Factory 2. Apparently, you can uh, operate these these AE2 machines sideways. So that means, I believe, I can have I can have this inscriber be fully automated using three hoppers in configuration. I'll give it a try once I get it. I'll set up, but for the moment, um, this big reactor is more than enough for my power needs. This thing has got you know, a, a disturbing amount of power here. I've, I've, I still have more than two stacks of fuel, so I'm in good shape for this. This is also going to be the thing to power that that greenhouse that with, with, with an MFR planter, a composter, harvester, etc. Once I get all that, all that set up, that's pretty much what, what, what I've been doing here. So getting back to the task at hand. Uh, I have done a little bit of stuff with witchery, not too much that they report so far. I've got uh, witch's cauldron, so I made some anointing paste for that. But I, I just put a hardened portable tank as a, as a water source. I could make a um, aqueous accumulator or some other infinite water source here. Mm, we'll, we'll see when I get to it. I'm just put these blocks here just for uh, spacing, and so I know how far this thing goes out. I also made a witch's oven with two fume funnels. I highly recommend anyone getting into witchery, always, always, always make these fume funnels. It saves you a lot of time when you want to make the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, extracts or the, 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 the fumes. Uh, over here, I have done, I've, I think I pretty much finished <clears throat> my back entrance. And all I did was I, I took some glass and I, I just made, made a sort of a waterfall effect here. And then I put took some lava buckets and I made another waterfall effect out of lava. I kind of like it. It's a little messier than I would have. Ooh, pig. Piggy. He's perfect. Just what I need for my present for Eddie. There we go. One thing that's very cool, though, are these. So I actually planted uh, two more there and there, uh, these uh, silverwood trees. And that's, that's because uh, if you look, if you look on the mini map here, you'll notice that this area has a different color. That's because I actually got not one, but two of these trees to spawn pure nodes. So if you look here, these are now magical forest biomes. Very cool. So I have I here's a cool thing. I measured this. I measured this previously when I discovered one in the wild. These things go out to a 15 by 15 um, square. So out to approximately this way. So what I did was I put these other over here, other ones there and there, uh, just to even the space. So when the if when these finally spawn pure nodes, they will make a square that that, that that's, that's uh, approximately 30 by 30. So this is all going to be my mana bean farm. But that's not the really cool part. The really cool part, if I can grab my uh, thermometer, is this. There's the pure node in here. Uh, I can't I can't scan it. It's weird. There. That is the cool part. This second one here is a double node. That is, I've never seen this interview in the wild. That is awesome. I love it. Cool. So I, I have, actually, you know what? Just for safety's sake, I'm actually going to grab a second uh, present. Let's see. Where can I do this? So I'm relatively safe. I'm thinking, I've got some, I've got some time. So those of you who have seen me grabbing animals or probably have a good idea what I'm going to do, I am actually going to do a little bit of, whatchamacallit. And I, I don't see any reason to have, have a special area. Well, yeah, I do actually. Yeah, over here. Okay, I'll do it right here. I am going to do the ritual for making... Oh, that would help. You know, if, if I want to activate the vision sigil, it might help if I actually had an activated vision sigil. Okay, so I should be able to get this done in time for midnight. I've got dirt, just I'm dropping on here. I'm pretty sure I, I, I'm, I never done it before, but I'm pretty sure I could just easily use the local grass. Did I bring enough dirt? Uh, yeah, I think I just brought enough. Yep. 
that I think that should be big enough here. Let's let's try it out. So enchantment table. Drop that here. Redstone. Oh, oh, sorry about that. All right, so let, let's test this. Hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Okay, we, we got everything needed. We just need to wait for uh, midnight, which is pretty close, very com mostly coming up. So the tricky part about this operation is going to be twofold. One is that I'm actually going to do two of these. Uh, the second one is that I'm going to need to run like hell and then come back, basically. Let's see here. Now, I think this is the third time that I've, I've done, done this ritual. The, the first time went horribly bad, and that it made me learn that I definitely need to bring with me a, um, <clears throat> a jetpack. Jetpack is very, very useful for, 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 the, for this, this operation. Okay, a little bit longer, like a minute or so. Okay, I think it is just about time. Let's do this. So... Oh, I didn't do that. Like him. Oh, didn't count, didn't count. Hey, sheep, come here. That's it. Flying away, flying away. Okay. Back away, back away, back away. My briefing is off, fortunately. Come on. One, two. This stuff is about to get nasty. Get as much as I can. Wow, seriously? Oh my god, this, wow, this, whoa, whoa! I heard him before, there we go. I back away for a second, gotta get some more food. Okay, this is where it gets dangerous. But I was actually very pleased that it took that long for them to spawn. When I did, when I did this in Skyblock, it was way more difficult. Wow, this bow sucks. I gotta go. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Okay, so I'm gonna sleep through the night and reset that thing. And I'm back. Okay, so um, apparently I had no idea this would actually happen. It activated both of my division sigils. I was all, all set here to reset the, the ritual. It activated both of the rituals that I had in my inventory, the, the sigils I had in my inventory. So, cool. Uh, I'm, I can just tear this, tear this down and continue on with my present for Eddie. Sweet. So, of course, uh, be, it being Eddie Magpie's birthday, I definitely want to make him a cake. Unfortunately, I don't have... Ah, there we go. Uh, my plan is definitely to make uh, an animal pen. I'm not going to make uh, the um, the extra cruelty animal farms I have in the past because it just isn't worth the time. I, I generally don't need enough uh, animal products to warrant that kind of automation. It's just not worth it for me. On the other hand, I do occasionally need mob drops. So I, I will be making an auto spawner. Give me a second. This has been driving me nuts for a little while. I have been working a little bit to clear out some of the uh, floating islands in this area. I don't mind floating islands in general. I just don't like them when they're that close to me. It just irks me a little bit. I also want to work on some kind of staircase up here. I did put the ladder for the wind generator. But I'd like a, sta like a staircase down to my greenhouse once I get a chance. All right, so it's been a little while. And if I knew you would come and I'd bake the cake, I'd bake the cake. How to bake the cake. Okay, so I know it's three milk buckets, and I know it is uh, some sugar. Actually, I think I got this sugar off of a witch, so I'll use that. And I know it's some wheat. And I know I'm missing something. What am I missing? Is it this? Hmm, no, that doesn't look right. Okay, so no, I, I think I know it is. I think it's three wheat. Two sugar, I think I'm doing this right. Two sugar. You know, actually, in real life, I'm actually not too bad of a, of a cake baker. In Minecraft, I'm a little bit weak on it. I think I need one egg. Is this right? Yay! I made a cake. Cool. 
and I got an achievement for it. The lie, the lie. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna go and, and get a, get this, this present ready for a magpie. As I said, it's been a short episode, but this has been Kankadia on the TriCraft server, and the cake, the cake is a lie. It's a lie. I'll see y'all next time. <laughs>